Hello everyone, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Previously, we just began Case 3, and it seems that Phoenix Wright gave a very poor defense to one Maggie Bird, and she landed in prison. Except no, it wasn't Phoenix Wright who defended her. It was a double pretending to be Phoenix. Or at the very least, literally everyone mistook him for Phoenix. And now the real Phoenix Wright is here to get to the bottom of this mystery and see just who is uh, disguising himself as him. And moreover, to clear Maggie Bird's name in a case where a victim was poisoned. So... <laughs> My goodness, our path has brought us to this glorious specimen. Good lord. So, Mr. Armstrong, um, I was giving some thought as to how I should voice him, and I, I, one idea did come to mind. There's this infrequently recurring gag character on The Simpsons who um, is clearly a caricature of someone. I have no idea who it could be, but uh, they speak with a very distinct sing-songy voice and just um, basically their catchphrase is something like a oh, yes a oh, yes I had a stroke <laughs> I don't know maybe if I did that voice exclusively for Armstrong it would get really annoying for everyone I don't know um gosh ah uh, you know I'm still recovering from a cold so my throat is still destroyed and I can't properly s uh, make my voice sound like I wanted to sound, so I, I really don't think I can do this guy justice. I want to do this guy justice. Look at him. He deserves nothing less from me. Uh, and moreover, I am not good at pronouncing French words or accents. Like, out of the most common languages in the world, uh, English, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, or whatever. Um, yeah, no, French is like a complete mystery to me. I don't know a single thing about it. I've never really heard people speak French at length. Um, like, the closest I've ever come to that is this one time I watched, like, the first five episodes of this cartoon called Wakfu, which was interesting, and I kind of regret dropping it, but... Anywho... Ugh, enough delaying. Let's... Let's just get on with the show. Okay. Uh... Oh, what do I do for his voice? For the first time, I'm just completely stuck here! <laughs> like... Like, with, like, all the characters. Like, there's been, like, 50-plus characters we've seen so far on this visual novel series. And for the first time, I'm just completely... Uh, I just have no idea what to do for a voice. Ah. Uh. Okay, maybe... <laughs> okay. Maybe I could just go for a juxtaposition here. Uh, a juxtaposition. Uh, why can't I pronounce that right? Juxtaposition. That's it, I think. God, help me if I got that wrong. Maybe, although he looks very flowery and delicate and feminine, maybe I could go for, like, this deep manly voice. Yes. Manfred von Karma lives again. <clears throat> Beyond venue, welcome to my petite restaurant. Huh? B Avenue? Oh, none, my petite tulip. Huh? Me? Look at this face, like the kitten rejected by its own mother. You are fatigued, none? Allures, you need this. An aromatic bath oil melange, a la Nerioli and a la Rose. My personal recommendation. You think I need what? 
Oui, oui. Just add a couple of drops of this mixture to the bath water, and voila. It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for La Monsieur. Who? Me? Look at that face. Like the puppy rejected by life itself. You are fatigued, none? For you, Monsieur, I recommend this. Oil of bergamot. And maybe a end of... Oui, oui. I will add the peppermint and the clary sage for a fragrance exceptional. Such an invigorating recipe will bring out your delicious beauty, Monsieur. M my beauty? Alors, if you will be seated, I will bring you the special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. We're lawyers. Oh god, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. I know this already, Monsieur. You are the Phoenix Wright, no? Uh, yes, you know me. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, uh, still a recovering fat cold, guys. Uh. My, wee oui, wee. Oui. I never forget a man who flirts with me, especially in court. I guess he was cross-examined by your mysterious senile. <laughs> Looks like everyone to do with this case knows who I am already. I wonder what sort of impressions and the eop has been leaving on people, don't you? Allow me to introduce myself to you again. I am John Armstrong, Enchante. Yeah, I'm feeling it. This voice works, I think. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god, look at him. I love him so much. So, what does Trey Beyond mean? I know Trey. That means three, right? No, that's Spanish. No, no, no. Trey Beyond is Francois. In English, you could say, very good. Oh, very good? We oui, exactly. The atmosphere is très bien. The cuisine is très bien. Oh, that was the same spelling, actually. If the food's so good, why aren't there any customers in here? My cuisine is not for all. Some people, they do not appreciate the hot cuisine. That everyone liked hot cuisine. Since I have lost Maggie, I do not have good hands. So, you're running this place on your own now? Oui. For the moment. No, one's as, no one has answered my advertisement. Oh, poor ma. Please don't eyeball me while you say that. I am the chef. I am the manager. I am also a trained aromatherapist. A roaming what? The practitioner, the aromatherapy, the art of soothing the soul with the delicate floral aromas. Delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but. So, could you tell me what you know about the incident? Man, uh, beyond. It makes me sad to remember it, yet I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So, it was the third of last month, just after one in the afternoon. The man who was in here for coffee suddenly became ill. Be because of the poison in his coffee. That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took his drink to him. I was in the kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came out to see what it was, he was already slumped in his chair. He was dead? Mon Dieu! Oui, he was dead. Maggie had passed out also. And this man who died, was he alone? Oui, Monsieur. All alone. I know that Maggie said there was someone else, but... I see. La police. 
They asked me many times. Are you sure there was no one else at the table? They asked. But I am not the only one. The old man said the same thing. Ah, so the customer's an old man. Old man? What old man? Um, so who was this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder, there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? My, we. Oui. As usual, he came alone that day. Ah, a frequent customer. At the time of the murder, he was here. He saw it too. But he said the same thing. That there was no one else at the victim's table. But Maggie swears there were two people. My, mademoiselle, the lawyer, you could not prove this, none. About the lawyer, that was me, I suppose? My, bien sûr. <laughs> I, I'm surely butcher, butchering these, these. God. Wow. He's the first person who said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. Hmm. Now, who's the one making stuff up? Huh. Okay. So... What do you think about this... sports paper that was left behind? We found this sports paper in the magazine rack here. One of my customers must have left it behind. Do you have any idea which customer it was? It's the only ideas I have, mademoiselle. I saved my kitchen. I am not a lawyer myself. I do not wish to speak out of turn. But your defense in court that day was a little... How you say... Lacking, perhaps? Ah. Even a Frenchman who cannot speak any English could have done a better job. You are very cool, though. Oh, oui, oui. So handsome. Wow, I wonder just how bad the defense could have been. Every time you opened your mouth, the whole courthouse stirred. Oh, man. That is something I don't want to imagine. But please, monsieur. There is no need to show me that. You are mon. Phoenix Wright. The worst defense attorney in town. I think I can imagine how he formed this completely wrong impression of me. Um, the last time we met, did I show you this badge? Oui. You flash it to everyone in the restaurant. Oh. So, the double wasn't like roped into it accidentally and he just went with it. This was part of his plan. He planned this. He had a fake badge ready to go. Interesting. Huh. <clears throat> Looks like Zen Eop is a bigger fan of flashing stuff than you are, Nick. That's about showing off the badge, right? 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 Uh, let's move. Oh, no, wait, actually, I forgot. Uh, sorry, sir. Here we are back again. Let's have you talk about people. Uh, yeah, tell me about Maggie. Maggie was a policewoman once, Miss Paul. I am surely butchering these, and I'm so sorry. Yes, but she had to quit for, um, reasons beyond her control. Wee oui, wee. Oui. She was the suspect of the murder investigation, no? Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave to her the perfume for the happiness. Happiness perfume? A oui, wee, blended from bergamot, like I have given to you before. But she's been arrested again, and found guilty this time. This is true. Her natural aroma for unhappiness must have been very strong. Just admit it, your perfume doesn't work. Oh god. <laughs> I am not surprised she was the prime suspect. 
After something like that took place before my very eyes. Something like what? What's this guy talking about? Does this mean... Maggie did have a motive? We've got to ask this guy for more info. Stat! Yes, I concur. When Maggie took the coffee over to the victim, did anything happen? Uh, uh, we... Uh, I suppose you could say so. So, what happened? None. It was, er... Uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie said she didn't even know the guy. But she's still being indicated for murder. The prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. We, oui, it is true. If there was anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please, tell us anything you know. Oh, yeah, Cyclops. That's a thing. I forgot about these. <laughs> Cyclops? No way. What are you going to do, Nick? I just have to remove... What the... What's wrong? The Magatama. It's gone. Oh my god, it was! It wasn't in our inventory just now! Wait! What? Huh? I had it in my pocket, but it's vanished into thin air. What? And I could see the Cyclox. Maybe that means the Makatama's nearby? Um, Mr. Armstrong, could I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting. Was anyone else sitting there? That is a question you will have to ask him yourselves. Huh? Him? The old man spends all of his time down the park. Oh, at the park? A, a park? Oh, a park? What park's that? Behind the restaurant. It is called Vitamin Square. Vitamin... Vitamin Square? Vitamin Square? Is that a pun on something? Uh... Je vous me and pre, my dear. Oh, God... Let's go check out this vitamin square right now, Nick. Okay. Uh, I guess I might have dropped Magatama somewhere, or maybe someone pickpocketed from me. Uh, yeah, okay. Vitamin square, let's go. Who is this? Oh. All this fruit. Right. Yeah, fruits give you vitamins, that's right. Oh my. Um... There's a big missed opportunity not to make that slide look like a worm. Like it's coming out of an apple, you know? Uh. So this is Vitamin Square. Yeah, I see where they get the name from now. The fruits scream vitamins at you. Hey, Nick. That's the guy, right? Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouchy-looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. Maya, he's not throwing seeds for them. He's throwing seeds at them. Ew. <laughs> Look at this extremely Californian man holding his extremely Californian box with his... Extremely Californian garb. Good lord. Ugh. The grumpiness threat level has just been raised to red. Hello? Sir? Uh, maybe I should look around first. What's this job listings thing? Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. It looks like it's dated for December. Alright, 
So, grumpy, grouchy old man. Right, I guess I should go for like a male old bag. <laughs> uh. You disgusting rogue, picking up something someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? Ah, that's none of your business. Good lord. This man's nose rivals Buggy the Clown from One Piece. My goodness. <laughs> I guess he's kind of supposed to look like a drunkard. With what, what, what with the flushed, the flushed cheeks and the red nose, yeah. He's like a, a drunk old grouch. I love him. Sorry, I, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back. Too bad. I really want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. Uh-huh. Hey, that's mine. Alright, can I look at it? No. Interesting. Uh, how about these birds? Hey, look! Pigeons! Yeah, and heaps of them, too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? Those are doves. Wait, wait, aren't doves a form of pigeon? That's a dove, not a pigeon. Poor things. So they can't be symbol of peace and harmony just because they're gray? Is that it? You're overthinking this one by just a smidge, Maya. What is this one? This one is... That one's actually white. It is a dove. <laughs> there is a dove among them. I used to love sandboxes like you wouldn't believe. Really? You? Sure. Finding iron fillings in the sand with a magnet was my favorite thing to do. Uh, okay. There are worse hobbies for kids to have. Iron filings? Wow, that's too exciting for words. It was my ambition to collect every single shred of iron in the sandbox. I was such a kid back then. So, did you manage to get all the iron? No, I never did. I think I came close, though. Come to think of it, I still have all the iron filings around found way back then. You want them? No. <laughs> this place is so fruity. That's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. They're one of my favorites. Then that apple slide is perfect for you. And what is so perfect about it? Oh, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Slide down it a few times. Go on. Woo! No way. I get covered in sand if I slid down that slide. No one can see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try too. No drinking fountain, some birds on a tree, an orange seat. Looking at this orange reminds me. Of Jeremiah Gottwald? Uh, of what? But you're supposed to eat a lot of them to ward off colds in the winter. You can't have fun during the holidays if you're sick in bed, you know. You don't have to tell me twice. Uh, nothing there? Okay. Yeah, nothing to really see here. This is a public park. I doubt this location has anything to do with the murder or the real suspect. So, old man. Uh, what did you see? Um, excuse me. <laughs> Would you mind if I had a word with you? Yes. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? So you don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? He's really chucking those seeds at them. It's got to hurt. Go on, eat this. Ugh. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress at Trey Beyond. Ah, it's a disgrace, I tell you. An utter disgrace. A disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Revealing? 
Uh, you mean her uniform? The youth of the day. They don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. Not one ounce. Whatever happened to the old Bushido values of Japan, like honor and modesty? Real Californian here, guys. What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. Yo, your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting the girl where it hurts. <laughs> oh my. Do you go to Trebion a lot? Hmm. That miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve in there is not food. Where's the sushi? The tempura? The rice? Trebion is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want real food, not those snooty snacks. <laughs> You're in California. Oh my god. The, trans the English translation has turned him into a weeaboo. <laughs> He's a grouchy, old, drunk weeaboo. Uh. And what about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to there. There. Yes, the waitresses. <laughs> They're practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? You know what? I fully agree. <laughs> uh, probably for different reasons, though. Listen, it's not my restaurant. Ha! It's a miserable excuse for a restaurant, that place! Miserable! He certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. If he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just... If you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Uh, sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons! You want food? Ha <laughs> ha! Take that! He must be hiding something, right? If he is, I should be able to see a cyclock or two. Oh, wait. I don't exactly have the Makatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick? That Makatama's only on loan. You'd better find it or else. If Pearls ever gets wind of this, I'm going to be in a world of pain. Right. So, um... What do you think about my lawyer's badge? Um, excuse me, sir. Can I just ask you about this? Hmm. 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 Sir? Here you go, boy! How does some pigeon feed sound to you? wasn't exactly what I was hoping to get out of this guy. <laughs> Alright, nothing about the magazine about the trial. Nothing about the magazine left from the day of the murder. Uh, the job listings I just stole from you. Nope, nothing about that. Uh... So, what do you think about Maggie Bird? Uh, no, nothing about Maggie either. Yeah, this guy's locked up tight, I guess. What about John Armstrong? Uh, Mia? Uh, I mean, Maya? Nope. Yeah, he has nothing to say. Oh well. Uh, nothing to pan over, right? Yeah, no, no, no panning. Okay. Well. Let's move back into Trey Beyond. Oh, we don't have the old man's profile yet. Okay. Um. Well, maybe. Well, we talked with Armstrong, Maggie. What do you have to say about him? Oh, so you met the owner, Mr. Armstrong. He's, um. Oh, how can I put this? Pretty unique, huh? He has a really intense aura, as a chef and as a person. Yeah, he has a pretty intense aroma, too. So, did Mr. Armstrong really not see the killer? Apparently not. Well, he's in the kitchen all the time, so I guess it's possible that he didn't. 
Well... Alright, surely something's going on in the Criminal Affairs Department. No... Ew... Uh... Well, um, I may be out of ideas. Did we show... Yeah, we showed Maggie the sports paper, that's right. Um... What if we showed her the job listings? Um, Maggie? Oh, are you looking for some part-time work, Maya? Why don't you take a job at the restaurant? I bet Mr. Armstrong would hire you. Really? Me? It's pretty cool being a waitress, you know. And in the kitchen, you'll get to see all of the chef's greatest secrets. What secrets? You can't make it obvious, but just spy on him for a bit. You'll see. It's interesting. Wow. I can't wait to get my apron on now. Okay. <laughs> Not sure if that did anything. Um. Yeah, no, I still don't have the Magatama. What about the job listings for you? Metamoncel! Uh, yes Are you looking for the job? What? N no no, I was just... Let me see. Your style is unto different, but you have a good face. Different? Fel felicitations, you have passed. I will hire you. Beyond, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. Nick, help! Oh my god, was this really what I had to do? I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both. Um... Hello? Maya? Well, Maya's dead. So let's leave. Nothing new with him, I think. Um... Well, while Maya's doing her internship, maybe now something showed up? Oh, here we go. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. I guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. Okay, how about the department? Oh, thank God. Right. Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other cases for now, pal. I'm just really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. The retrial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And Godot's gonna be the prosecutor. Ah, here we go. I am very interested to see what Godot has to say about a poisoning by coffee cup. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's going to be interesting. He probably won't say anything immediately. He probably already knows the details ahead of time. But once the point gets really pressed, I wonder how he'll handle it. Oh, him... Now listen up, pal. If Maggie's found guilty again... Uh, uh, yes? Um, I'll... I'll make sure you get locked up good for it. Got it? <laughs> right. So the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force, you were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I, I mean, not too close, you know. <laughs> An intense duel of lipsies. Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? I was just her... It wasn't anything like... Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. I'm she sure is sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, so that's it. 
Our big old gumshoe has a little crush on Maggie. I... I don't like her or anything, Baka. I... I was... Bark! Note to self. Gossip with Maya about this later. <laughs> Look, pal. Don't tell anyone, okay? You've got to keep it a secret, got it? Uh, sure. And would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal. Not me. You'd have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. <laughs> so, I was wondering. Could you fill me in on the victim? Uh, Glenn Elg, who's a computer programmer. Glenn Elg. His name is a palindrome. It's spelled the same backwards and forwards. Huh. I wonder if that has anything to do with his music. Um. Glenelg. Glenelg? Is that a pun on its own? No, I think it's just a palindrome and that's it. I see. A programmer. So not a musician. If he wasn't a musician, then MC Bomber might have been the name of some tech virus he cooked up and was trying to sell. Uh, he was just a regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef. He said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. A programmer and a first-time customer at that. Yeah, no, he definitely chose the restaurant as some covert meeting place with that other guy. The Zen Eop. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding. What was her supposed motive? Uh, sorry, pal. I'm really busy. I haven't even got enough time to sift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could this motive have been? That's a lame excuse not to tell us, Gumshoe, because you're about to talk to us more. Uh, this wasn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, th that's right. Uh, the judge already ruled on the case, and all the evidence was in already. Only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I've got a mount of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... she's... Okay, so she's a bit, a bit out there. A bit off base sometimes. But she was a good cop. That's not exactly complimentary, you know. So what do you think really happened? Just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Alright, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone. Even the chef. And there's that CD. CD? Oh yeah. She did mention something about a CD. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place upside down. There was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. Yeah, no, I think I came to this conclusion earlier. Uh, the real killer stole the CD. That was the motive for his murder. Uh, murdering. He wanted to steal the CD and claim it for his own, without paying for it. But, didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. A radio? Didn't even have a CD player? 
Yeah, you got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Time to think of it. The owner of Trade Beyond didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. Well, yeah, he does have Cyclops up. Um. Huh. What do you think about the sports paper? Oh, uh, what's that? The sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Trebion. It's dated the same day as a murder. You may be onto something here. Take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey! What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber! Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Ah, it's no good. I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal. I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I wanna get a handwriting analysis done on the scribble. Ah, there you go. Handwriting, huh? It'd be good to know more about that in any case. Uh, thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. Hey, right on. Have the job listings. Nope, nothing there. <laughs> All right. Let's. Oh, nothing here with Maya. Right. Poor Maya. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taken a shine to her. I also just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Trebion once things have cooled off. Yeah, I was actually gonna head there right away. Nope. Nothing. She's still in the kitchen, it's okay. Um. Well. Uh. Now what? Actually, yeah, what, what now? Actually, maybe I should talk to Gumshoe about the people. That's right. I don't know why this game insists on only letting you travel to certain places. Ugh, maybe it was some sort of limitation from the Game Boy Advance? I don't know. Anyway, Gumshoe. What do you, th what do you think about Maggie Bird? Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have, but... I... I wasn't much good at consoling her. I'm... I'm not very good with words. Oh. Yeah, I guess I must have looked a bit down. Maggie was really supportive of me. It was great to have someone to talk to. Did he go for her, or for himself? Uh, the chef of Trebion, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Ooh la la, your body is full of the toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. Uh, what's in it? I don't know. The label says Juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady. Uh, I mean, guy. <laughs> huh? You can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our char charming chef. Oh, your suspicions about the charming... The charming... Is... Wait. Yeah, it is charming. The charming chef. So what exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Trebion? It's, um... Kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kind of unimportant. Gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You go to Trebion and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Um, don't suppose I get a choice in this, huh? I better find out more about the chef at Trebion and report back to Gumshoe. 
Try it on! There we go. Let's head over. Oh god. The scent of flowers sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. Whoa! Whoa, who... Uh, uh, hi? Oh, um... Hello? Who was that just now? A customer? With a bandage around her head? Um... She had sort of a dark aura about her. Oh. Oh. Maya is mangling French, just like me. Thank God, I'm not alone. Ah, welcome. B Avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, God! No! I should have known. I should have known she'd show up in a maid costume. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh... For some reason, I'm getting Steinsgate flashbacks. Oh, Lord. Uh, for the record, I'm not talking about the visual novel, but the anime. I uh, did a reaction to the anime of Steinsgate over on my blog on Tumblr. Uh, anyway. Oh, it's just you, Nick. M Maya? Well, how do I look? Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. <laughs> oh, Phoenix, you like it. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. Then who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh, since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. Right on. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work the cash register. Of course, we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. Hey, Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment. Uh, a lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's the Twin Tea Set, so it's $20, of course. The Twin Tea Set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Kitchen! A lunch special, please! With all the extras! Drink, side salad, dessert, and gift! I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. <laughs> oh, lordy. Maya's really getting into this. So how much is the set lunch, then? Twenty dollars, huh? But with the drink, side salad, and dessert, it's... Forty-five dollars?! <laughs> hey, wait a sec, Maya! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here we are, your deluxe fortify lunch set. Oh... Fortify! Forty-five! Ah! Let's see. We got a lobster head with some lobster meat or whatever on the side. A flan and some sort of doughy pastry thing. Ooh. I'd eat that. Whoa. A dish inspired by lobster and abalone fricasse with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit! Um... Thanks? Come on, Nick! Hurry up and try it already! Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Erp! Well? 
Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here, it's yours. Phoenix doesn't like lobster? That monster! Really? Erp. Uh, remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you'd better polish off that plate. Uh, I just remembered. I've got to clean the toilets. Hey! You can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. Uh. Oh, it's not, it's not that it's lobster, it just tastes really bad. Oh, no wonder Trebion doesn't get many customers. Right. How does that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Okay, redeemed. Phoenix likes lobsters, he calls lobsters good food. We're in the clear, all's good, everything's good, we're good. Hey Nick, you want to take a peek at the kitchen? The kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Huh, now what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen you'll get to see all of the chef's greatest secrets? In the kitchen? Ah, uh, that sounds tasty. Hey, wait up! Maya! What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Weren't you going to show me around? Oh, there goes my plan to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. I better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. Right on, let's head in. I expect nothing short of a disaster. Oh. Actually... Well, the walls are kind of dirty, I guess, near the stove. But otherwise, it seems pretty clean. There's a dresser, or not a dresser, but a, a little table with a mirror on it. And a whole bunch of, of um, Armstrong stupid MLM uh, essential oils, whatever. And my Magatama. It's sitting there on the table. Hmm. And here it is. The famous Trebion Kitchen. It's my first time in here too, actually. There's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we'd better search quickly. Chop chop. Right. Well, clearly the Magatama will be story progress, but... Let's look around first. What's this? Looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow! Look at all these little bottles! Oh, they're ar aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see. One, two, three, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, what is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Oh, don't tell me that's poison. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And... It doesn't smell. Scentless, huh? So what's that liquid inside then, I wonder? Liquid. No, the poison was a powder that was sprinkled in, wasn't it? Hmm. Or maybe... Maybe it was just sugar, harmless sugar. And the real poison was inside that vial. And Maggie only thought that the sprinkling was poison. Who knows? Hey Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? Right. This should be examined in the lab. Now this is one large mirror! I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's... there's a book on the dresser. Clar Clarice Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize material, is it? Looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool! Read one out! And say it in your best French accent. With intensity, okay? 
Okay, um, here's one. Ahem, it's called Printemps. The two of them, like actors from a film. The coffee still undrunk. The sweet nothings are too soon. One set, set, set. One set. Uh, oh, on that sad Sunday morning, the foolish cocktail so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea, and I know what I will do. I must lie to you. I must. Huh? That's it? Uh, yep, that's a poem for you. Okay. <laughs> Weird. What are these lace curtains for? I don't know, but they give the place a real homey feel, don't they? Uh, lace curtains. You know, if I was a cooking pot, I'd be perfectly happy to sit on a shelf under those. How do you respond to something like that? <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Huh, that smells good. Something's bubbling away nicely in that pot. It must be the lobster and abalone fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Isn't that what you just what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French dish I know the name of. <laughs> right. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. Never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey Nick. This container has... Oyster sauce? What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? <sighs> ah, look! Right there on the counter! My... My Makatama! What's it doing there? What indeed? Yay! Makatama get. Okay, nothing new here. Um... And look at these knives! They look really sharp! I'd like to see how one of these slices through a cheesecake. A cheesecake? You don't exactly need a sharp knife for one of those, Nick. Eh... I think that's it. We done here? Maybe the reason the food tastes bad is because Armstrong adds these essential oils to his food. Alright. So now we can talk to the old man. There's a broken scooter here. It's pink. Who would own that? Armstrong himself, maybe. Huh, the old guy's not here anymore. Drat. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Who's the psychic here? <laughs> oh my god. My predictive skills are not dulled by the passage of time. Yeah, baby! <laughs> oh my. Ah, oh, drat. And I still have some unanswered questions for him. Um... Ah, oh, scared away some of the pigeons and the dove. A scooter, huh? Who leave it right in the middle of a park like this? The wheel guard and the light are busted. This must have been an accident. It's totally wrecked. <laughs> it doesn't end! It literally didn't end! That man just screamed for an hour! Holy shit. It's the dude. How did anyone mistake him for Phoenix? His skin is bright red. It's literally redder than that apple and strawberry in the background. Oh my god. Look at this literally colorful character. <laughs> literally, a literally colorful character. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this design. 
this design, though. Oh, you know, you know what? Look at his shirt. That is a tiger biting a dragon. It's biting a dragon. You know what Phoenix's name in Japan is? It's not Phoenix. It's Dragon. Well, uh, kind of. I think his um, his name is Ryunosuke. Um, I want to say Naruhodo Ryusuke or something like that. Um, which kind of translates to Dragon. I understand. Uh, which I yeah, that's kind of weird. But regardless, the symbolism of a dragon biting a I mean, a, a tiger by biting a dragon is not lost on me. Um, I swear, if this man's name has anything to do with, like, a, a tiger pun, I'll lose it. <laughs> or, um, oh my god. I am going to have a lot of fun voicing this character, I think, but that can wait until next time. Uh, <laughs> the bike belongs to him, huh? That little pink bike belongs to this tough guy. Good lord. Look at that scar on his face. Yeesh. Um. <laughs> well, that's two episodes in a row now where we're ending off with the introduction of a character who is surely going to be very, <laughs> very fun. Oh my gosh. I think I really like the cast of this case a lot already. My god. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. What can I say? As always, I am thoroughly, 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 thoroughly enjoying this case and this game. Oh my god. I have to wonder about that... That aloof-looking woman with the bandages on her head. What in the world is her deal? But I guess we'll have to figure that out later. Um... Right. Okay. Anywho, that'll do for now, I think. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been Phoenix Wright Trails and Tribulations. I thank you for watching, and hopefully I will catch you next time. So, until then, please take care.